Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the second annual Climate Crossroads Summit. Uh, my name is Amanda Stout, and I direct the Climate Crossroads uh, Initiative here at the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. And it is very exciting to see so many folks joining us this year. Thanks to everyone who has traveled from near or far, um, who is waking up early or staying up late to join us. And thanks to everyone who has been working so hard to ensure that the next two days will be engaging and impactful. We have a lot of people who have been working hard behind the scenes to make this happen. As all of us gathered here today know, climate change imposes, uh, poses increasing risks to people, ecosystems, and the economy. To confront this crisis at the scale and scope needed, we must bring together different kinds of knowledge, many different communities and lived experiences, many different decision makers across all parts of our governments, and many different sectors. Enabling these sorts of connections is why we launched the Climate Crossroads Initiative last year, and why we're excited to bring so many of you together today at the summit. At this point, I'd like to introduce Gregory Sims, who's the Chief Program Officer here at the National Academies, who will offer some opening remarks. Greg has worked here for more than 29 years, I think I got that right, um, during which he has provided incredible leadership in helping bring science to the table on a wide range of complex and critical societal problems, including climate change. So thank you, Greg. Uh, thanks, thanks, Amanda. And, and welcome, everyone. Those of you here in the, in the auditorium and, and those uh, joining us online. Uh, here at the National Academies, we're very proud of the, the work we have done to assess and validate the science of climate change and to warn the world that climate change is not, not only real, but has put us on a, a path towards a, an unsustainable future. In, in fact, it's, it's been over 40 years since we issued a, 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 na a now famous report, the so-called Charney Report, that provided the first comprehensive assessment of the global climate ch change from atmospheric carbon dioxide, and, and a report that's actually turned out to be remarkably accurate in its predictions more than 40 years later. Over the decades that followed, the, the academies, uh, we've continued to assess the state of climate science as researchers' understanding have advanced and as the world begin to wake up to the urgent need to take action. Uh, to this day, the academies were, were still busy advising the nation and the world through our work, including uh, recent studies on how to equi equitably transform the, uh, to a net zero economy, to help communities relocate after environmental disasters such as floods and hurricanes, and to identify and reduce risks that climate poses to human health. But as the impacts of climate change increasingly affect us all, we at the academies have realized that a business as usual approach was not enough to prompt the kind of actions that are needed if we're going to head off the worst effects and truly achieve a net zero emissions future. With this in mind, we took a fresh look at how we could innovate the way we deliver guidance to catalyze actions, applying what we know from the many studies we've done to address climate change in real time. And this is how Climate Crossroads came into being. Climate Crossroads enab enables the academies to be more nimble and responsive to questions as they emerge by mobilizing the full breadth of science and engineering and by engaging with communities in new ways and cultivating innovative partnerships and collaborations. Uh, as one example, in, in September, we will be announcing a new cohort of congressional, Climate Crossroads Congressional Fellows. These fellowships personally connect uh, Capitol Hill staffers to science, engineering, and medicine to help inform climate-related decision-making. Uh, but make no mistake, Climate Crossroads is reaching far beyond Washington. We're forming relationships and fostering connections globally and at the state and, and local level, including with low-income communities and communities of color who are bearing a disproportionate 
share of the burden of climate change. Our aim for is for Climate Crossroads to be at the cutting edge of new approaches and solutions. And that's what today's summit is all about. For starters, uh, we'll be hearing early and often about AI's potential to address climate change, as well as the potential risks, including AI's substantial carbon footprint. Uh, in keeping with Climate Crossroads' cross-cutting focus on various communities and sectors, we'll be looking at the role of financial markets and public and private investments in the energy transition, while also learning about the production of climate knowledge that draws upon the expertise and experience of a wide range of communities. In recognition of the critical part that universities play in the, in the fight against climate change, we'll explore how they can better fuel innovation, produce a robust energy and climate workforce for the future, and help their local communities address climate change in, address, in addition to address, uh, reducing their own carbon load. These are only a few of the issues that we'll explore together at this summit. Over the next two days, we hope you'll connect with people with experiences and expertise different from your own, and keep an open mind to perspectives that may be outside your comfort zone. We invite you to take what you've learned here back to your own organizations and communities, and we hope you'll stay connected with Climate Crossroads long after the summit ends. Ultimately, we all share the same goal, to mobilize real action on climate change uh, so that everyone will have a better future. So thank you. And I'll now uh, welcome Amanda back uh, to share some, some important information before the next session. So Amanda. All right, thank you so much, Greg, for those kind remarks. Um, okay, so as we get the program un underway today, um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the National Academy of Sciences building, where we are gathered here in person in Washington, D.C., is physically located on the traditional land of the Nakonchtank and Piscataway peoples, past and present. Um, we want to honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have um, been its stewards throughout the generations. Uh, we honor and respect that enduring relationship that exists between these peoples and nations and this land and acknowledge the expertise held by different Native communities because it is so crucial to the work that we're doing to understand and address climate change. I'd like to extend a special welcome to any Native peoples who are joining us. We are really deeply grateful for your participation. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to those who are joining us from community-based organizations and from the international community. Um, as Greg shared, we recognize that it's so critical that conversations about climate action be broad and inclusive, and we are very glad that you're able to participate with us today. Lastly, I'd like to extend an extra special welcome to any of the students and young people joining us. Your ideas and your energy and contributions are so critical to how we as a global community confront the climate crisis. We want you to feel welcome and comfortable to fully engage in the conversations. Um, so I just wanna say, I recognize this space can be a little bit intimidating. It's a little intimidating for me too, and I've worked here for a long time. Um, but I think we've all come here to learn, students and those of us who've been in the field for a long time. I think I can guarantee that no one has expertise in every topic that we're gonna cover over the two days. So I encourage all of us, students and the rest of us alike, to bring our collective curiosity and courage and humility so that we can ask questions and explore new ideas together. Okay, so at this point, I wanna take a moment to talk about some norms for participation. Um, we are committed to fostering a professional, respective, and inclusive environment here at the National Academies where all of our participants, both in person and virtual, can um, have a participate fully in an atmosphere that is free of harassment and discrimination based on any identity-based factors. Um, so we do have a formal harassment pol and bullying policy, which is shown on the slide, and you can go to the website to get more details. Um, if you feel like anything comes close to the level of bullying or harassment, we encourage you to please um, report it to any of the staff. We have yellow um, dots on our badges, so it's easy to find us. Um, or you can contact our HR department uh, directly. And just to emphasize, this is true for both the in-person and the virtual spaces. 
But what we really want to do is avoid any of those sorts of situations. Um, so please ask you all to remember that we are deeply committed to creating productive and inclusive discourse. Um, we know there's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, we know that many of the conversations we need to have around climate change are really difficult. And so I want to thank everyone in advance for helping us create a space where we can move the dialogue forward together um, and with respect for different opinions and perspectives. Um, all right, so I did want to take a safety moment, safety minute here. <clears throat> um, for those of you who are here in person, if we have an emergency, there are several um, exits in the building. If you're here, the easiest thing to do is go out that door that you came into the auditorium, go straight through the Great Hall and out onto the Constitution Avenue. Um, the restrooms are marked in blue on the map here. We're going to use this map a lot, so hopefully you'll get familiar with it. Um, and so if you um, exit the auditorium and take a right, um, you'll find the facilities that are located near the C Street entrance. If you go out into the Great Hall and take a left, you can find the facilities that are uh, across from the East Court. We will be um, feeding you and giving you some beverages and, uh, throughout the next couple days. Um, most of the, um, uh, we'll have uh, coffee and snacks at the breaks, as well as lunch will be available in the Great Hall. Um, and we'll share with you later where, um, places where we all can uh, sit to eat um, our, our meals. Um, we have tried hard to honor dietary restrictions that those of you shared with us. Um, there should be signs, things should be labeled, but just let someone on the staff know if you can't find something and we'll try to direct you to other options. We're trying to do a good job with food and, and um, composting, um, food waste and composting, so please help us and make sure to sort your trash responsibly. Um, we don't want to create any more waste than is necessary. And I don't know if you noticed, but it's a little hot outside. <laughs> um, you know, we didn't plan to hold um, this event during a um, 100 plus degree day, um, but I guess it's not that surprising for July in um, Washington, D.C. Um, we've tried to uh, have a number of water towers um, out in the, in the Great Hall. In addition, there's a water bottle refill station. If you go out to the right and down the stairs that are marked in orange, right at the bottom of the stairs there near the small cafeteria, there's a water bottle refill station. One final note on food and beverages, no food or open beverage containers are allowed here in the auditorium. Um, so you can bring your water bottle in, hopefully you brought a bottle, um, and please try to help us keep this space as beautiful as it is. Okay, so that's the housekeeping stuff. So now I'm gonna take a minute to talk about um, the agenda. Um, so we are hoping and encouraging you to access the agenda on your device or you can find it posted in a number of places around the building. This is part of our effort to reduce any um, unnecessary waste. Um, so if you are going to be joining, uh, accessing the um, agenda online, highly recommend you join our, the Wi-Fi, the visitor network. Um, you need to go through a, a sort of a, a acknowledging and accepting the terms. Um, and then this is the QR code that will take you to our event page where you can find the agenda and other materials related to the meeting. If for some reason you don't have a device or you can't access it, access it this way, we do have a few printed versions of the agenda at the registration table, so feel free to stop by there and pick one up. Um, here in, um, so we have a packed agenda and I'm super excited about all the different sessions that we have. Um, here's a kind of an overview of the events that we planned in on the main stage, which is the auditorium. Um, these will be a series of facilitated discussions followed by audience Q&A. Uh, so kind of like our Climate Conversations webinar series, if you've ever tuned in to one of those. Um, we'll have no slides. These are like the most slides we're going to see for most of the, of the meeting. Um, and there'll be lots of opportunity for discussion and questions. Um, and all of the sessions will be live streamed. Um, we do want to encourage you to ask questions and participate. So we have a microphone here in um, the aisle that folks can come in person to ask their question. Um, we also will be using Slido so that folks on, online can enter questions there. You in the room can also ask questions through Slido or get on and upvote um, questions. So if you go there, you'll see there's some different options for the auditorium or for breakouts. So you'll need to select the auditorium if you're here at one of our sessions in this room. Um, I know we're going to have more questions than we can possibly get to. 
we do read every question that comes in on Slido, and we use that in planning our future events. So don't you know? Don't worry; it hasn't um, been uh, uh, lost. Your good ideas and your good thoughts and contributions. Um, we will have closed captioning enabled on the video. You just click the CC button in the lower right portion to see the captions. Um, so, and then this year, we're so excited that we have a whole number of concurrent sessions. And most of these sessions have been organized and planned by colleagues here at the National Academies and some of our volunteers and other, uh, other colleagues. So the meeting is gonna have a little bit more of a conference feel. Um, I know I've heard from a few of you and I feel the same thing that I don't know where to go because I'm excited about multiple sessions. Thankfully, everything will be recorded online so you can always go back and check things out later. Um, the, um, um, so if you are coming here in person so um, and um, attending these concurrent sessions, just throw up this map again. The purple stars are where those sessions will be. They're kind of in the corners of the building. Um, and so the, these, these maps and the uh, agenda will be kind of on a slider in the, um, in the Great Hall so that you can go check that out if you need help. And there's lots of staff around who can direct you as well. Everything's going to be recorded, and we're going to post it online as soon as possible. So just be aware that this, this, is, will, this will be recorded. Um, and then, of course, we want there to be lots of networking and opportunity for you to connect with others here. Um, we're trying a couple things to make that a little easier to start conversations. You'll notice that the roundtables that we have topics, and this is sort of an idea that if we wanted to try out so that if folks want to talk about and continue the conversation about AI and climate, they can go to the AI table and find other folks who want to have that conversation. Um, and there are a whole number of different topics there. So check those out if you're looking to connect with folks. Many of the topics are aligned with our sessions. Um, and then, of course, this evening we'll have a tabling showcase and a networking reception and encourage you to attend that. All right, almost to the end of all this housekeeping and we'll get going. I just want to take a moment to do some thank yous. Big thank you to our donors, um, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, the National Academy of Sciences Arthur L. Day Fund, um, the Caldera Foundation, and many small donations from individuals, including members of each of the three academies. We're really grateful for those donations that helped make this event possible. We're also grateful to our other funders who have supported the Congressional Fellows Program, including the Heising Simons Foundation, the Bezzy Fund, and the Platform for Agricultural and Climate Transformation, or PACT. I'm really excited to be working with them as well. There are many other donors, both from philanthropy and federal agencies and others, who are supporting the climate work at the academies more broadly. I could not fit them all on the slide. Um, and so just want to indicate that you know, all of the support makes it possible, and we're very grateful for all of the support that we have to do this work. Also want to um, say thank you to members of our Climate Crossroads Advisory Committee who helped us in planning this event. Um, many of them are here, and many of them are going to be facilitating the discussions and the sessions that we have. So thanks to all of you for your work to help make this event a success. Um, and then thank you to so many staff who have all worked very hard to make this event a success. I'm just going to ask those on the core CCX team if you can wave or, you know, let folks know that you're around. They all have yellow. Um, let's see, I see a few back there. Maybe they're all outside. Nikki over there. Um, they've worked so hard to make this uh, event successful, and they're really happy to help with anything you need. So please, thank you to them, and please make sure to check them out, um, uh, reach out to them if you have any questions. Okay, so with that, um, my clicker's not working anymore, but I'm sure Eric's gonna fix that for me. We are ready to get underway. Um, this year we have added a new feature to the main stage. We're doing fireside chats with each of the presidents of the three academies. Um, so thank you to them for supporting our work and for participating in the summit. Um, and our CCX Advisory Committee member, Mariette DeCristina, is going to be facilitating those fireside chats. So I'm going to invite up um, NAS President Marcia McNutt and Mariette, who are going to kick us off with our first fireside chat. 